Ladies and gentlemen of the crypto space, we're live on a Monday, June 28th at 11.41 a.m. You know, sentiment around these parts change on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. I liked what I saw last week. And the week before, you think I was selling assets? I watched the principal depreciate. In the course of those last two weeks, I've also watched pretty much uh, my, my tax obligation account grow to the point where I'm uh, currently about 50% able to pay 2021 taxes. I had to take a fair amount of, uh, I had to realize a fair amount of gains in order to pay 2020 taxes, but I'm almost at the point of break even where I now have accumulated the uh, tax obligation for 2022 for 2021, at which point I'm back to square one and I'm able to take profits and uh, break off some change for, for, for future realized gains, tax obligations. And that's the way you look at things from a business perspective. And it makes so all too much sense to me. No more buy low, sell high mentality for, for no, I don't do that stuff. I don't play these games. I'm not playing it. Like people buying Doge, they want Doge to a dollar. What are you going to do when it goes to a dollar? You're going to sell it. What's that? You're going to buy an asset just to sell it for what? Dollars? Dollars, the last bag no one wants to hold? No. You need revenue streams, boys and girls. That's the difference. That's the way to look at things differently. Let's get this show on the road. I got two spec plays for you today. A rare treat. I don't talk about I don't like talking about assets lately specific assets I have done it historically obviously historically I've talked about stuff like ren and and rook and I, and I mentioned plenty of assets over the, the last almost two years at this point but um you know I like to encourage people to find assets on their own and most of my content is geared around methodology ideology and strategy and con contrarian thought how to think about this shit like no one else does most people come in and they're thinking about what do i buy and where do i sell it gives a crap what you, when you sell it don't sell it no and you definitely should give a crap what you buy but you have to know what to look at the properties the the functionality the uh the contextual relevance uh, to how a particular asset and protocol fits into crypto-centric infrastructure and then how crypto infrastructure fits into the global macro-financial framework. You guys kind of know what I'm saying. I, I know what I'm saying half the time only. Only half the time. Revenue share, spec plays, risk considerations. Today's episode is spot, spot, change, angel. The non-custodial swap exchange for social good. Stop depositing on exchanges. Not your keys, not your crypto, non-custodial, DeFi, or nothing at all. Bam, let's pop it over to the main screen and see who's in the stream. Heirlooms in the house, always a pleasure. Wave, Mark, Mario, Craig, Sean, GPC, Don. Looking forward to today's convo. Uh, John or Jan, hello. Ding, ding. Hello, Noah. Thanks for introducing BSI. Doesn't that change everything on osmosis? What happens when 714-day bonding finishes? Rewards come. In, well, the rewards come continuously. Uh, the, this pool has been filling significantly. This is my favorite pool right about now because it was cranking out 5,000% APY for like a week. Uh, this thing's hovering at around 1,000, which is nice. It has 20 mil, so they're obviously cranking out a fair amount of Osmo incentive. Um, this is, all this was airdropped. That's crazy. That was a. This is one of the largest airdrops I've ever seen. So this number just keeps cranking up. That's nice. I got a bunch staked over on the Osmo chain as well. You got to remember what's so interesting about Cosmos is each of these are separate blockchains. Um, so this is kind of what you know, Andre and and folks are trying to push for at the Ethereum level with like Phantom and so blockchain interoperability, whereas Cosmos is completely built around the concept of blockchain interoperability. Each one, So it obviously is much further along, even though um, it seems like it's brand new. The notion of like a, an AMM where you could swap between assets, uh, you could trade between these assets. 
It seems brand new, but this is a long time in the making because each one of these assets is a completely separate blockchain. Um, <laughs> and it hits the BSN, and it hits the China narrative, and Iris is in the BSN, Iris Net. So Cosmos Atom is not in the BSN, but Iris is, Iris Net, and that's their business solution. And what Iris achieves is blockchain interoperability with the entire Cosmos Hub ecosystem. Wow. Wowzers. So Cosmos is in the BSN because of the IBC vis-a-vis -vis Iris Net. So this is my largest one. So I got probably about half this that I've had in spot iris staking for like a year now but uh that was a nice airdrop <laughs> ding ding <laughs> john hey no i hope you're doing well i'm okay i'm busy i'm tired my daughter had me up at 3 30 in the morning last night daddy orange juice orange juice and i'm like honey uh, i ended up bringing my blanket and pillow and i'm falling asleep on the couch um, <laughs> K K Carthus Carthus. Any thoughts on Barnbridge as a place to park stablecoins? So, yes, Barnbridge is cool. Curve is cool. Urine is cool. Convex is cool. Uh, Popsicle Finance is cool with their new uh, V three protocol. So, well, there's no stables there though. So that's a good point. But I'm not a fan of providing liquidity anymore. And that's kind of the spec plays today, which are very consistent with the pretty much the way the vast majority of my portfolio is structured. So you guys know, as of late, I've been a very big curve proponent and convex as a derivative asset of the ECRV. Um, I'm more interested in revenue share of a platform. So instead of providing like liquidity to a particular pool, I want to get a piece of the action of all pools. And that's just the way I've been operating and focusing the deployment of my balance sheet. And, you know, we'll only know in hindsight how successful it is. And it's been lucrative in the short term. And I've been able to, as I've said, accumulate my tax obligations for 2021, which is nice. And I expect to produce nice revenue for the rest of the year. And I expect to be able to draw a salary. And, and so on and so forth. And so far, my thesis has been playing out as expected. And, you know, I hope this plays out over the coming years. And it's not just a short-lived opportunity. But I sure as hell am going to find out. Because I don't want one-time gains. I don't want buy low, sell high. I want a recurring income stream for the rest of my damn life. So I can pay bills. Just like a salary from working. Except I'm not working. My capital's working. Yes. Yellow Mellow, any thoughts on upcoming Gravity Bridge decks? Uh, it's all big deals in Gravity Bridge decks, uh, Cosmos. So Os Osmosis obviously is in that territory as well. So Cosmos and the Cosmos Hubs, and uh, that's all just starting. This is like 2020 Ethereum right now. This is the first AMM. This stuff is big. You know, bottom line is for me, my atom position, anything that I got going on on Cosmos hubs, that's multi-year. Just, I don't even think about it. Uh, the, you know, the only way to liquidate it is on a centralized exchange. I mean, there's no atom Ethereum uh, liquidity right now. So it's just uh, from a DeFi standpoint. So it's not even considerable. I, I don't operate on centralized exchanges. They're way too annoying. Uh, just off my radar. No interest whatsoever. Uh, just I, I need permissionless and I need seamless and I need click a couple buttons done. Bam. Thank you, ma'am. It functions. That's all I'm interested in. Angelo, how did you get the airdrop? Uh, Adam. Just they literally airdrop folks that hold Adam. So I had a decent Adam position. Where's my I've had this for like a while, a long time. Something like almost four thousand seven hundred Adam, which is pretty nice. Forty eight grand. It's not a small position. It's a nice position. So they dry or drop to atom holders. Um, and the Osmo staking seems give good rewards too. Yes, that's right, ding, ding. So this isn't my spec play, guys. Uh, this was just brought up. So just saying. Um, Justin, hey, Noah, could you explain what the effects of August 14th will have on curve? Supp uh, supply, supply disruption. Uh, emissions reduction. Um, the way price action works over long periods of time is basically supply and demand. 
So if you have a decrease in supply, less assets available for people to purchase, uh, and demand either stays the same or increases, the price will appreciate. As more dollars are seeking or, or, or finding less available resources to consume. Um, I'm living in the past or future. My site says Osmo is four dollars. I I don't know my friend, but obviously it doesn't have much liquidity outside the scope of osmosis. And maybe it's on some of those random, I don't know what the heck the name are, centralized exchanges. Um, so I would take this as a grain of salt, what the price action is. Um, I wouldn't buy any of this really. I, I would just buy Adam and Iris and, and that's how you could generate an osmosis position. This is all very speculative, guys. I don't deploy capital to very speculative assets, or at least large portions of the portfolio to very speculative assets. In fact, these two spec assets that I'm going to talk about briefly, um, I don't have any pickle. Uh, I do have uh, ice. So ice was a 4% uh, portfolio deployment. It's a relatively large position. Um, but this is pretty interesting. And the, the developers that are working on it, have nice partnerships um, with Alchemix, Al Alchemist, Al Alchemix, <laughs> crossing two projects. But uh, Alchemist is pretty cool. So uh, the, this is incentivized by the Alchemist vaults. And, uh, uh, but that's a, a PLP, a Popsicle Finance LP position. So um, I don't, just food for thought. It's not something. I'm not deploying liquidity. I own ICE because uh, ICE, they said, is going to um, be a revenue share of platform revenue, uh, platform transaction fees. And that's my focus. That's my interest. So I have a spec position in ICE. Uh, but Pickle has something similar because they adopted the curve protocol, uh, the curve monetary policy, which is pretty cool. So DILS. <laughs> so look at me looking at meme coins memes then when does a meme coin stop becoming a meme coin when it has a monetary policy and it has a functional use case and owning dills is 45 percent of revenue bam now we're talking about a recurring revenue stream now if you could own 10 percent of this and you're making five grand a week it's a nice revenue stream i wonder how much um i wonder how much it would cost to get five grand a week worth of uh, revenue by owning Dill's Dill Pickle. So it's yield. It's part of the platform's revenue, which is meaningful. And that's uh, something that I want. That's my focus. And that's the same thing with Popsicle. Ice is nice, and ice is not available yet. So ice is governance. And there's, there's a, what catches my fancy is there's a huge amount of governance going on. And their Discord is, is hot with activity. Not just speculators, but also uh, developer participation, the AMAs, the documentation, the medium articles, uh, the GitHub activity. It's very nice to see as compared to many other projects that are not necessarily living up to you know, standards. For me, Visor doesn't live up to expectations and standards, um, compar comparatively speaking, uh, to other projects, in my opinion, you know, the quality of, of the amount of the, and the amount of code that's being contributed and the quality of the code um, and, and where um, base code is derived from. So a lot of their base code was derived from forking Alchemist code. And that is, um, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing to fork code, but it's something that's, you know, difference between writing your own code and building off someone else's code. It's a notable difference. Um, Adam, hey, now, apart from the Curve, CDX, CRV, what other platforms are you interested in that offer a share of revenue streams via a token? Well, that's the point of today's spec plays. Uh, ICE is the only other uh, quite potentially speculatively lucrative profit share that uh, is catching my fancy. So it's not available right now, but so owning ICE is speculatively is is that's how the the price action is moving it's pure volatility based on speculation uh but what's catching my fancy further after this loads is the amount of tvl in two days since uh um since 
here. Let's go. Let's go to the data. Since Sorbetto launched, wow, dollar ninety two. It's been appreciating very nicely. Um, but the TVL has been going up pretty meaningfully. Eight mil. They got over ten mil in two days. Um, and ICE holders are going to get a revenue share of all platform transaction fees, and that's what I'm interested in. Um, Stephen, I've been watching you live for a couple weeks now and finally have made it into the chat. Love your content, sir. You're very welcome. I'm here as best as I can be. Daily live streams. And we got Discord, which, you know, a lot of people come and go. It's kind of a revolving door. But uh, it's our Discord. That's where we talk about these things and we figure out what, what's speculative, what's risky, how much risk are we taking. And, you know, my encouragement, me personally, is take less risk. You don't need to take much risk to, gen to at least expose yourself to assets that produce revenue, which means acquire more. And we work. We have jobs. So buy more. So spend less than you make, and this is a methodology for saving, except saving now, you're able to produce revenue instead of putting in a bank account and the government's shafting you. Oh, that's a horribly graphic analogy. <laughs> Banks, dollars, let's not delve into that. I, I talk on Twitter every now and then about my macroeconomic observations with an antiquated, deprecated system. What's your risk tolerance for holding RAP ETC? Basically 100%. I have uh, no doubt that there's a... Uh, I have no issues with their custodial solution. RAP ETC, 100% as well. OBTC, zero tolerance. TBTC, zero tolerance. PBTC, zero tolerance. SBTC, SBTC, I have a high tolerance. It's synthetics. I have a very high opinion of synthetics as a platform. Um, but I... I you know, for me, uh, WBTC, RMBTC, SBTC, OBTC, TBTC, PBTC, not of interest. I avoid them completely. Uh, do you feel comfortable holding a wrapped Bitcoin through a custodian or a DAO? Do you like holding the real BTC? My Bitcoin right now is cold. I got real Bitcoin uh, just because I, you know, if I, if I have it in Ethereum or if it's on Ethereum, I'm going to consume it and I'm going to deploy it because otherwise it's stagnant equity. And um, so I just kind of like, tried my best to protect that that's one bitcoin uh, everything else is the point and functioning capital uh, you, people could talk all they want and about big business and the billionaires coming in and that's exactly what we hear from from jim jim's talking about oh he's hot on ethereum because you know it works people are using it to buy things it it's like cash They're using it to buy nfts and and other stuff and you know it's good to hear persons like himself talk like that but we are way past that narrative especially in this chat we know the bitcoin story we know they're going to print money from volcanoes great we know the billionaires want to hold bitcoin versus anything else over the next 30 years we hear that story um so then comes what's next because we're not just going to sit around with, with you know five grand in our our retail level savings to five grand is going to turn into all right 20 grand over the next five years 30 grand you know that's not going to change lives so we get a little bit more speculative and we get a, add a little bit more risk to the table and volatility so we talk about ethereum so in the ethereum has obviously a greater chance of appreciating asymmetrically as compared to bitcoin but you know we go a little bit further because Ethereum isn't necessarily a money maker until Ethereum 2.0 comes online. And then in that instance, it's probably not the most lucrative money maker. Sure, if you get 10, 15, 20%, it beats the pants off a savings account. And you also have to have 32 Ethereum. But uh, it's my opinion that's quite rational that the protocols on Ethereum are much more valuable than Ethereum ever will be. So I actually don't have much Ethereum exposure right now. No big deal. I think uh, the protocols that I observe are, are like looking at venture capital, like looking at startups and penny stocks. And um, this is the right place for me to deploy my capital. I have a comfort level with this market nowadays. I'm very much accustomed to the volatility, and I have a capacity to identify the assets that stick, the assets that have developers and are moving forward and are iterating and have the properties that I'm looking for to express my balance sheet optimally. Revenue stream assets. Every asset in the portfolio, no matter what, is working. Every single 
asset is contributing to cash flow. Um, that's the name of the game. Craig, uh, well, Chris, uh, well, I'm missing a lot. Uh, when locking up curve for four years, seems like APR is around 20%. Am I seeing that right? Probably. That's from a VE curve perspective. Uh, bear in mind, VE curve is uh, a little bit sh uh, opportunity cost. Uh, it gives you your governance right. So I have VE curve dating back to like late March, April 2020. Um, but nowadays, uh, CVX CRV is a derivative of VE curve, and that's much more lucrative. Um, than VE curve alone. So, you know, you're getting 75, 80% on CVX CRV, which is VE curve. Um, so, which includes the 20% revenue from VE curve. Uh, what are your thoughts on the balancer system? They have just come over to Polygon. Balancer is awesome. Uh, I don't use it because I rather use one inch, and one inch goes through balancer. So, it's all good. I get to use balancer. I have no interest in providing liquidity at all. Um, as I tell everyone, I want liquidity from all of LP, not just one LP. So if balancer out of revenue share, yay, now you're talking about an asset that I want to deploy on my balance sheet. Um, Chris, no, if you had to choose today, would you lock curve for four years on curve or forever lock it in convex for CVX CRV? Well, you're not locking it forever. CVX CRV has liquidity. You could trade it. And in fact, yesterday I traded some CVX CRV for some CVX. Um, CVX yields much more curve than CVX CRV. Um, over twice as much curve is emitted from convex. CVX as compared to CVX CRV. So it's long term versus short term um, capital deployment, you know, methodology. Um, but yesterday, I think CVX had a nice price for. It. And I don't think it's going to go down much more. I think the market seems, uh, seems like it has some bullish overtones. And even if it goes down, it's still emitting the same amount of CRV, CVX CRV. But still, so the price point is extremely misleading because it'll go down and then it'll go back up. You think the market's going to go down forever? No, eventually it'll be 10 times the size of what it is. So that entire duration, I'm getting my CVX CRV emissions from CVX. Let the price go down. I don't have time for this short, short-term volatile bullshit. I don't have time for this. Craig, I'm doubling down on my BNT position as the staking rewards are meaningful for me these days. And I'm now concentrating phase of my portfolio. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So um, I got a Bancor position. I probably have a Bancor position the same size as my Adam position. There you go. I, so I mentioned there's very few revenue streams that are, uh, then that's a heck of a revenue stream. Bancor is just growing. I mean, meaning the asset I have, I have the quantity of BNT I have, it's just growing and growing and growing. And I'll check back in five years, and I'm pretty sure I'll be quite happy. Will you need to stake ICE or somehow get the revenue? Yes, yeah, so you will need to stake ICE into an ICE when it, the functionality becomes available, Alex. Yes, sir. Uh, Jan, how do we join the Discord? Uh, a lot of folks don't uh, find my Discord on my Twitter profile. I should start putting it in... Uh, in in the YouTube uh, description. Um, there you go, my friend. I put it in the channel. Uh, Charlie, Gov giving us the shaft, right? You know, they do, they've just destroyed the economy. You know, I wrote a tweet the other night, like, sorry, Grandpa, they kind of destroyed the economy. So the fact that there's no interest, the fact that bonds are what they are, the fact that how they monetize the debt and the, the Treasury and the Fed have bypassed commercial banking money creation process, it's just ridiculous. It's just a perverted system. It's nothing like our, our the system that our parents and grandparents were exposed to. Is literally, the cash is the last bag anyone ever wants to hold. It provides no interest. In fact, it, there's a carry cost of 15% per year. You're losing money every second of every day. So it's just, anyway, so that's why we're here. That's why everyone's here. Uh, what other protocols do you recommend investigating or considering apart from Kurt? Thinking about a long-term way of having uh, the income. That's exactly what I just talked about or the, the last two protocols I mentioned, my friend. Uh, is there an ICE airdrop? No, there was an ICE airdrop. ICE was airdropped a long time ago. Um, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't hold on to that airdrop. Uh, 
Um, but now I bought a decent ice position. You know, I think I snagged like 30,000 ice. And uh, we'll see how it does. I think it's a decent spec play. You know, obviously it's not generating revenue at this moment. So there's the speculative nature of the value allocation. Um, but, uh, you know, if you want to make money, sometimes you have to increase your risk profile. So if I wanted to be ultra conservative, I just take my capital and move it into CVX, CRV and CVX. And that just generates cash flow. That's just cash flow. Um, but in order to outperform, we increase our risk profile. So that's what I chose to do. I have my ice position. Uh, pickle, Oops, excuse me, it's, not a, it's been around a while. Pickle's been around a long time, since DeFi Summer 2020. So it has a, an, an established track record in many regards. So that's good to see. Um, not something I'm going to take exposure in, but it does have the curve monetary policy, which is good to see. B&T is another great asset just to let sit, but it's so damn volatile. Man, Craig, you know what I'm talking about. This thing was 8 bucks. It's 3 bucks. I mean, this thing was 20 cents like last year. It's extremely volatile. I mean, Bancor is really something you just... Now, as compared to their original protocol in like 2017, 2018, nowadays it's something to just let sit and let the protocol work. And, and speculatively, in like four or five years... It'll grow 10, 15, 20x on the money. Uh, and just yielding, yielding, growing, growing. And you could compound it as desired, but it's just growing, growing, and growing. Um, very different protocol than it was originally back in, in the last market cycle a couple of years back. Um, but um, it's a decent play. Uh, the monetary policy is extraordinary, and it beats the crap out of any central bank sovereign monetary policy, in my opinion. Um, but that's separate and apart. We have a history of... Uh, asset volatility price action wise and that's meaningful um and i you, you could express yourself and your sentiment of these assets and how you balance your portfolio and you know i appreciate Bancorp. i have it i have my plenty of other assets still lingering around with the largest uh, percent of the portfolio deployed into um curve these are the convex at this point because it just is a heck of a I'm expecting Curve to just, the liquidity to just explode when they launch their permissionless uh, pool structure. That's going to be awesome. That's coming sooner than later. That won't be months uh, when uh, Curve has basically the same uh, permissionless pool creation process uh, that Uniswap has. And so I hit I hit the Curve revenue stream, and Popsicle is really the first protocol uh, to hit the Uniswap V3 narrative, and with integration with the uh, Alchemist vaults, the Crucible, uh, it really hits the vault narrative. So, come on, this was the original Uniswap V3 narrative I was talking about, that Visor never delivered on, method evaporated in the thin air. Oh, X-Token's still around. X-Token's hitting the, uh, the managed pool positions very nicely, uh, but it's not necessarily a revenue share. That's providing liquidity. And I don't really want to provide liquidity anymore. I want a revenue share of everyone's liquidity. That's what I'm thinking about. Matthew Pickle Finance just launched on Polygon. Yeah, I mentioned that on Discord. So I, you know, I, I share my alpha on Discord. So that's what caught my fancy and reminded me of the curve monetary policy adoption that happened a while back. So they did that a while back. Rupert's in the house. Always a pleasure. Um, yeah, Polygon, you know, it's awesome. I'm more interested now in the protocol and how awesome the protocol is than necessarily the asset. Obviously, if the market's hot and you're looking at trends and you're looking for breakouts, you know, you can make a fair amount of capital, uh, you know, capitalizing on breakout hunting. And that's what we sure as heck did when the market was red hot, you know, two months ago. And, um, Matic was on fire, and that was a big breakout. You know, you catch a 50, 100% rip with 50% of your portfolio. It makes a big difference. That gets to you to where you want to be, but you got to sell it. And and that's not a strategy I like to deploy. That's definitely not a passive strategy. It's an active strategy. I don't have time for that shit anymore. <laughs> Craig, oh, for sure. My first entry earned over 200% APY for months, and now the size of the position and the returns, my dollar cost averaging is basically in a no lose situation. That's right. I mean, if you listen, if our portfolio and our positions are growing because of cash flow, 
None of this is a is a lose lose situation. We got cash flow. Take your profits. Give me a to your tax bank. Awesome. Doing it different than anyone else on this planet. I mean, the last thing you want to do is shove cash in a bank account. I was talking on Twitter last night about having a bank account denominated in T bills. That's I have, that'd be cool. I I've no interest in having cash. If I go load T bills onto a debit card and swipe, and it's automatically sold for cash. I would do that in five seconds. But there's literally, there's no strategic way to actually achieve that. It just, the technology doesn't exist, and it will never exist, because banking and fintech for legacy financials is basically dead. There's got to be no innovation whatsoever that's interesting at all compared to what's going on in DeFi. I mean, this shit is just hot. This shit is just awesome. This is tech. This is innovation. This is iterating at a pace that has no historic precedence. This is awesome sauce written all over it. Um, ding, ding. I find X token annoying, very slow, and have to wait for six weeks to guess my X token, really. What, uh, your incentivized emissions? So bear in mind uh, that's incentivized emissions and the escrow period facilitates uh, their monetary policy and uh, uh, alleviates excess uh, debasement, which is a depreciated pressure. Uh, so that's food for thought. But, uh, you know, I want platform revenue share. If XTK gave me a percent of all liquidity against across all the X tokens, oh, that changes everything. Uh, volatility becoming more and more irrelevant in my specific circumstances, right? I could care less about volatility. I've watched way over seven figs turn into less seven figs, but no biggie because the revenue stream is still there. The revenue stream has gone up. That's all that matters to me. How much cash you're making on a weekly basis, and you all know the pizza shop analogy. Dominic, I just hopped on, but love the popsicle. Yeah. Interesting stuff. I mean, look at this liquidity over 10 mil in like two and change days. That's awesome. So dollar ninety six. Ooh, looks like that was a that was a what well, dollar seventy dollar sixty five was my entry. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, would you consider sushi bar revenue? Yes. So sushi is a revenue stream, particularly X sushi. Um, but sushi is already a multi billion dollar platform, whereas popsicle is eight million dollars. That's a little different. So, um, and Popsicle is off the radar. Nobody knows what the heck this thing is. But this is hitting the Uniswap V3 narrative, and they're partnered with Alchemist for the Vault narrative. So it's pretty interesting expression, uh, you know, a, spe a speculative observation. Um, you know, what we do in the when we're allocating value is we tell stories, we have our narratives, and then we look for assets that fit the narrative. Um, and it's very rare that an asset uh, so small in market cap as this uh, fits such a massive, massive narrative. Now, obviously, I significantly favor Curve's monetary policy uh, as well as their V2 um, implementation of concentrated liquidity. Um, but that does not discount that you, we want exposure maybe to you know, Uniswap, which is much bigger, even though Curve is much better. Uh, that's just what it is so my ice position is significantly smaller than my curve position but i expect this position to generate a significant amount of revenue um speculatively and if it doesn't bye-bye i go bye-bye i go somewhere else so allegiance is to port to the portfolio not to the specific asset um red Red Dad's Code Lab. Oh yeah, love what you were doing, Noah. You're very welcome. We do things different around here, and I'm not the normal dad myself. Um, I have my two daughters, but I, I actively tell my daughters that paper money. We don't use paper money in this house, and it's a joke. So I got my two and a half year old daughter, and we go to a soda machine. And I'm like, Daddy, pay money, and I'm like, and I give her the cell phone. I'm like, here, money, and she puts the cell phone up, and she pays. With her with my cell phone, because paper money is for people that don't know any better. Sorry, maybe it's harsh words. Sorry, Grandma and Grandpa. May you rest in peace. Love you guys, but paper money's done. And fiat is the bag that no one wants to hold. So teach your kids wisely. 
And, you know, you don't have to do what I do, but I actively tell my kids that paper money is a joke. It's a bad joke. Does Abacadabra work directly with Popsicle for anything interesting? Uh, same developer. Abacadabra is interesting. The code base is, you know, it's decent. Um, yeah, spell is the spec play for Abracadabra, but it doesn't have a lot of, not a lot of debt. So spell capitalizes on debt interest payments. Um, and it's just not as, it's fairly lucrative, but I expect the asset to be volatile. Um, I, I don't know. It's not something I, I was tempted to have exposure to it, um, but I, I didn't uh, end up taking a position. Um, interesting platform, though. With MIM is, is basically a de debt that you're able to borrow, and it's a, a programmatic dollar stablecoin. And uh, it has overtones of Alchemix. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, but it's not something uh, for myself at the moment. Abracadabra is interesting. And for this stream, the two assets spec plays that I was uh, mentioning were Popsicle and Pickle. Uh, part, and bear in mind, it has nothing to do with the liquidity. It's not providing liquidity. I have no interest in providing liquidity. What I'm interested in is looking at how much liquidity is being provided and saying, I want some of all of their transaction fees. And that's the speculative interest that I have in ICE. And the same with Pickle. Albeit there's much less um, capital on the platform. Um, but it's been around a long time and it's not loading because I'm on stream and that just lags everything. Um, but uh, there was just something that, that reminded me uh, to, uh, to talk about Pickle because it has the current monetary policy and a platform revenue share. Um, but for myself, vast majority of the portfolio was convex for a curve position. Uh, brand, broke off a piece of, uh, of uh, CVX CRV for CVX. CVX yields about a little over two times as much curve as CVX CRV does, which is a more long term strategy as compared to selling CVX for CVX CRV. Um, and I'm more of a long term. Uh, operator. So that was why I broke off a piece for CVX. And I think CVX had a nice price floor because it is a very lucrative asset. Um, and ICE is a position that's speculative and it's uh, you know, took fair fair position size. But um, we'll see. This is something to keep an eye on. And bear in mind, if, if N ICE does not prove out to be what I'm looking for to best express the way I want to deploy my balance sheet, uh, boom, done. Goodbye. I go bye bye. So that's that's the name of the game. Uh, I need a soda machine like that, Charlie G. Um, well, there's a lot of N it's just an NFC soda machine that have the that support Apple Pay and Google Pay, so on and so forth. Ding ding for X token. I mean, when you remove your LP, you have to wait six weeks. Yeah, that's incentivized returns because those XTKs are incentivized emissions uh, from their treasury and however much they meant it um so it's a vesting period um xtk's a ridiculous protocol uh for lp positions especially with their uniswap v3 positions um and xtk is auto compounding uh for everything from one inch to kyber to synthetics to ave uh, that's great and bancor with xbnt it's a, I really like those devs. That is a heck of a protocol. I don't have interest in the assets merely because that's not the way I've constructed my balance sheet. But from a developer standpoint, those are really cool assets. That's cool tech. I really like what they did. I don't hold any XTK at the moment other than what was uh, provided to me as uh, incentivized returns for positions I had a while back. Um, but that's about it. Um, it's not something that I think it best expresses the way I want to deploy my balance sheet. Uh, Mix Mix is in the house. What of Terra and Station Wallet? Uh, no interest at this time. Doesn't discount that there'll be interest in the future. Just no interest right now. I think I don't have any interest in Solana, but Fa Phantom's hot. I mean, Phantom fits into the the banter going around with uh, the Yarn Boys, uh, the Alchemist Boys, and. Ice is on the radar, and Andre's talking about Phantom. So Phantom is potentially hot. Any thoughts on Origin Protocol? Yeah, the Harmony One. Um, it's on the radar. 
you know, they're all on the radar. <laughs> Solana, Phantom, Harmony, um, uh, Avalanche. All well, has to be on the radar. I'm not taking a position in it unless I could generate a revenue stream. If I can't make money with an asset, I'm not buying it. I don't care if the asset is a dollar and it's going to go to a hundred dollars. I have no interest in an asset like that. I want weekly revenue. I want cash flow. If I can make an extra five hundred dollars a week, that's interesting. If I have to babysit a position to make an extra thousand dollars and make sure it goes up, oh, and if it goes down, I can set a stop loss. No, I don't not. I don't want anything to do with something like that. I want cash flow, baby. <laughs> um, I hold STT and can't straight swap there. STTs are cool. Stake DAO. Uh, it's Julian Buda Loops, uh, you know, what he does. And that boy is big in the curve as well. So there's big connections there. I hold some SDT. It's nothing. It, I don't know. Uh, but uh, that boy's smart. It's a heck of an engineer. Andre was originally a phantom dev. Interesting, Craig. That's interesting, because that boy, smart cookie. I, can, oh, I, I think about dev work, and I could do this coding. I just, I just don't have any time. I got to get back to work after this. Uh, stable Terras? Yeah, I, I don't have any interest. I don't have any stable coins. Well, I do, because I'm accumulating my, my tax obligation. And for tax obligations, I accumulate GUSD, because I could transfer those to Gemini and get dollars to my bank account and probably less than two days, depending on how the banking system is operating. And if I transfer on a Monday, I usually get it by like Wednesday, which is pretty cool. Um, so I can't do that with Terras. So I just don't have any interest in it. Um, I use stable coins for on off ramp. Makes sense. Um, okay, that's the name of the game. Let's wrap things up. 12, 23 p.m. on a Monday, June 28th. We introduce some spec ops. We focus on the revenue streams. Buy low, sell high methodology is done, done, done. Waste of time. You know, eyes on the, the broad equities markets, eyes on the bond markets and, and yields and uh, see if uh, how things are from a risk uh, standpoint and then the macro from the macro perspective. Um, but all, all in all, you know, th these are the assets I want exposure to. And uh, I feel quite content and I have no anxiety. And I can sleep very well at night uh, knowing uh, these are the assets I've chosen and are, are working for me so I don't have to work. Um, okay. Discord's hot as always. Wish you all a wonderful day. Stop by. I will see you tomorrow. And uh, manage your risk, boys and girls. Very important. If you have any questions, we're always here. Always. Peace.